is in its uh, final stages of charging. You can see the, uh, the voltage uh, stay the same. The amperage and the, and the watts are falling. So I expect that within the next hour or so, or maybe half an hour, it'll be uh, on zero. And that means that the battery cells uh, have been balanced. Uh, this one is 3.653. This one is 3.653 and 3.653, so they're all equalized now. So there we go. Done. A little while ago I received my battery cells from China um, and the first thing that I did is uh, top balance them. Uh, I connected all the positives and all the negatives and charged them at uh, 3.65 volts which is the maximum allowed. So they should be balanced now. Uh, there was one cell that was slightly off in the beginning and now they were all the same value. Um, since then I started working on two battery boxes. Instead of one battery of eight units, I decided to go, because of the current system that I have, <coughs> um, I decided to go with two 12 volt batteries, so two times four cells, and they will each have their own BMS, battery management system. I have very little room in my van for batteries and I had to adjust each of the two boxes for their own specific place. Uh, but what it comes down to is uh, I put them uh, in a box and leave the sides open, uh, mainly for ventilation. What I did is I connected the box at the bottom. This is the one. I painted both boxes. I painted both both boxes with uh, some polyurethane, um, just to protect it against uh, moisture. That's always a problem with the uh, van. Um, this part here allows me to place the batteries inside, put all the wiring on and the bus bars. And then when that's done, give it at least some the terminals of the battery, uh, the terminals of the cells in this case. Give those a little bit of protection with this. And this will serve as a location for, amongst others, my BMS. So the BMS will be placed here, connected to the batteries and, and so on. Uh, and I'll put a fuse on there, as well as, if I can find it, as well as, uh, as, well as a terminal, one out here and one very likely here at the side. I have considered putting in a, a heating pad as well in each of them, uh, but I'm holding off on that because it is likely that I don't need it. Uh, if in all practicality I decide to, to take one anyway, uh, what I've done is put a metal plate at the bottom, uh, then I would put the heating pad underneath on this metal pad so that the heat will be uh, distributed a little bit and then the batteries on top of here. So uh, these are just uh, made out of uh, baking forms. Cut them down, cover them with some uh, clear spray against rust. Uh, okay, this is my first one, I have to remember. I'm fitting it this way into the vent from the rear. Um, I 
have to remove this. It's important because I have to remember, try to figure out in advance that I need a negative here on this side and a positive here. And I always have to be careful because these battery cells, they have a beige and a black terminal. But the black is positive and the beige is negative. Uh, but I have to start with a negative here on the left and positive and then turn it around negative and positive. And the next one, uh, yeah, positive and negative. And this one, the positive and the negative, and it fits quite nice. I made these in such a way that I can squeeze the top because these battery cells uh, they tend to bulge when you're charging them and that should be prevented so they have to be kept together so I can put this separation in later on so the terminals are a little bit protected and then even though this is a long rod I should have gotten smaller ones. Uh, I have these holes here because four holes on each side and with this rod I can and some uh, bolts I can raise the tension and keep them really close together. So the next step is to put some bus bars on. I ordered double the uh, number of bus bars, mainly because I needed that, that amount to do the top balancing over all of them at the same time. One bus bar should be sufficient, but from what I heard is that uh, some don't think that that's sufficient, so they double them up. So that's what I more or less did as well. Okay, that looks a lot better and safer. I'll put a nut on it. These nuts, those are flange nuts, but they're also serrated. So uh, I won't use a washer because I want them really to grip into the metal and so they won't move. I have to connect these three wires, B minus. To the to the negative, yeah. <laughs> Have to be careful. Is B minus to the negative of the first battery cell. Now I have three 10 gauge wires. Can of course put a lug on each of them, and then all three lugs on that set screw. Um, but what I did is I bought a number six gauge lug and if I'm lucky I can fit all three of these 10 gauge wires in this lug. Then I only have to connect one lug. Then I got my hydraulic crimper. I'm just preparing this number six and a quarter, that's correct.
that works. Now that I've got a lug on one side, I need to connect these three on the other side with the same number six gauge y uh, six gauge lug, but now instead of a quarter of an inch, I need a five sixteenth of an inch hole that connects to this terminal, and I will turn these wires this way. to put this rod in on this side comes out on this side another washer and a nut so I can compress it the way it should and then I got three more hi guys this is Joey and we're building a one-of-a-kind RV Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like and subscribe. Or better yet, uh, leave a comment. Thanks guys. Done a good job.